Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sean with Manly Made Minute and today we're going to be playing with some craft packing paper and I think I'm going to distress it out. So if you're interested in what we can do with this packing paper, stick around and I'll show you. So, I have saved a whole bunch of this packing paper. It comes in a roll, they tear it off, they pack your stuff in it when you get shipments. And I thought it's the great color of craft to make cards with. But it's really thin, it's, it's relatively thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this in pieces, I'm going to distress it, just doing some ink smushing. And uh, we're going to make some card fronts out of it. Then I wanted to, I've seen different versions of this, and I want to just do a simple stamp on the front with a floral um, and distress that little raised portion of the card as well, so my feature portion. So let's head down to my uh, down camera and kind of show you what I'm working with, and then we'll get started. Okay, so this is the craft paper. Um, just comes crumpled up, packed up around stuff that you have shipped. I have taken and cut this into uh, just slightly larger than my card front, so it's about six inches by about four and a half to five inches, um, so that I can ink smush these, and then we're gonna put these on uh, my card base and um, layer this up, okay? So those are my, my craft pieces. Then what I've taken is some scrap pieces of paper. I had cut them into Five, in, 5 inches by 3 and 3 quarters, and then I cut it in half, okay? So if you look at these, this is just cut in half of that, okay? These are going to be my little um, feature pieces that we're going to layer on top of this ink smushed craft paper, okay? Just kind of trying to give you a visual here of, of our overall project. Then I cut, um, same paper, not scratch though, I just cut card bases at five and a quarter by four inches. And then these are what I'm going to glue or actually mod podge these onto. Okay? So the idea that I want here is a very distressed kind of look of craft. Um, with some layering. So I've tested these. Let me show you my test pieces really quick. So here are the two craft pieces of paper that I ink smushed, mod podge them onto bases like these, okay? Now I kept these, I was gonna make cards into these and show you, but I kept, did not do that, and here's why. If you look at the difference between the two, I mod podged them both down. However, this one, I just took and smeared my mod podge onto my card base, layered this on top and just pressed it in and let it dry. I did not wipe any Mod Podge on the top of this because, again, we're using distress oxides and distress inks. They're, they're reactive and I knew if I wet them it would smear and reactivate it. And I didn't want to reactivate what I had. So I did it on the bottom, layered that on, but before I did that I crumpled this up and then layered it on so I had more more crinkles, okay? This one, I did the same thing. I took another piece, Mod podge this, layered it down, then I took and Mod podged over the top just to see the effect that I would get. I like them both, actually. This stays more oxide, um, chalky, see the colors that I wanted when I made it. This one, smeared some of the colors together because I had some yellows and different things underneath here that made some green um, and just smeared it around. I like both looks. So you can do whichever you want. I'm going to do both again today just to kind of show you. Um, then I let these dry overnight. Um, so I did these yesterday. I let them dry overnight um, so I can make cards into them. Now these pieces I took old pages out of an old book. I've got a couple of these old antique books that I bought just specifically for this um, idea for, for mixed media stuff. I tore the page up, glued the pages on, okay? Then I just took and ink smushed these, and I, I used more of the distress spray stains than I did 
the oxides to do this because I wanted it more vibrant on the top versus muted and chalky. Then I just took the Stampers Anonymous. Uh, this is the mini bouquet stamp set and then I just stamped on different flowers. Okay. I left one torn edge. I cut the other two just to kind of see see which I like. Now I will say this. These, bo these books are old. These pages are really brittle and porous and so I actually stamped these when they're still kind of damp um, from the ink. I should have let them dry even more, but it the ink soaked up and muted out on some of these, so you can see it kind of washed out. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's not as crisp as like this one turned out, turned out a little bit more crisp. Um, but anyway, we're going to try it again. I'm not sure if these pages are just too old, um, if I should put a layer of something on here to stamp on first. Um, but anyway, this is the look I'm going for. Then we're just going to layer it for a card like so with a little sentiment on it. Wanted something antique distressed. All right, let's get started. We're going to do my craft pieces first. I have the Tim Holtz Tonic Studios glass mat. This um, media, media mat came with it, so I just stick it right to the the white side working surface side here. I'll be honest, this is only my, this was my second time using it, this will be my third. Um, I was doing it on different surfaces. This makes a huge difference for ink smushing, just the way it beads and, and, and moves. Glass, it'll tend to run and look, look a little more runny and, and washy together. This stays kind of grouped together in beads. So, I start with my um, lightest colors first and build on top of that. So I'm going to start with my greens and my yellows, and we just smush down and I do two colors at one time, and I practiced this a couple times because I'm not a huge mixed media person. Um, Drying in between makes a huge, huge difference. Um, I actually just bought the heat tool. Um, I was using different tools that I have in my craft room, and this just makes a this made a huge, huge difference on how this dries and evens it out to re-smush. Now you can leave it like this, but I found when I smush, I get these lines. So I just take, as I've seen Tim and other people do in the videos, and I just move that around just a little bit. Okay, and we just start smushing. So I just tap and I try to even it out so I get like a this side, this side, down the middle, this side, this side. So I try to even that out just a little bit. And I'm going to do two cards, so we're just going to do two, but I'll probably do a couple of these at a time here. Okay. Now, dry these, I'll lay more down here. Um, if it starts getting too mixy, I'll wipe this and start over. Um, but I haven't mixed up too, too much, so we're just gonna lay some more down. And bead it up. Light spray, you can do big droplets. And I just move it, get that off my fingers. Now let's just dry this up. This tool, I will say, I thought the air would come out faster, more like a hair dryer. It barely comes out, but it's hot. So it'll dry relatively quick. Um, and if you have spots that um, are really pulled up and you don't want to just sit here and dry, you can take a paper towel, take your, take your rag, whatever you use in your craft room and dab it. Paper towels work really well just to dab it. Um, so just for purpose of of time and things. I'll probably dab some of these. On my ones I did last night, I didn't dab any. I dried these completely before before going on because I was I was really just playing with my um, a new tool, the heat gun, the heat tool. Now I like to get a fair amount of light on that underside preference um, for me um, so that it helps me control as I as I layer the rest of this up. Now I'm kind of done with this so I'm going to smush the rest of this on a spare that I can use. Okay, So I'm not wasting any. And then spray that and wipe this up and then we'll start I'll start with my next layer of colors. I'm going to bring in some blues um, into this. 
So that's my green. This is Distress Oxide. So this is mowed lawn and mustard seed were my first two. Now I'm going to bring in my Stormy Sky and my Ripe Persimmon. persimmon. I am not a huge mixed media person, not gonna lie. Um, I love the look of them, I love them. I actually love the cards. I want to do more, but when I started investing into card making, I kind of went a different direction and didn't invest into the mixed media stuff and into all this stuff. So I'm slowly getting stuff of some oxides. I've got some, some distress inks. I'm gonna put these in here because I feel like they're a little more vibrant. And then I just recently purchased a smaller set of these um, distress spray stains, which we're gonna use because I like the vibrancy of them. Tend to be more vib uh, vibrant. I always see cards with this stuff, with the oxides on them and I love them. But then when I do them, I feel like I want more vibrancy. Um, even though I like the end results. Um, so I'm trying my hardest to get out of that little comfort zone of, uh, I know what I like, but I also want vibrant because I think it looks better. But at the same time, then I see these end results and then I like it, right? Just breaking up those lines. And now same thing, I'm just tapping in. And the book, I you know, I just went to, uh, I found it on Facebook Market, an antique store that was selling um, antique books, old books by the bundle. I think it was five bucks, five, five books for fifteen bucks or twenty-five bucks or something like that. Um, so I've got five different books, and I'll I'll show those in a second. Some are much more aged than others, where they I feel like I would probably just use them as is and not do too too much to them because they just look so great as they are. Um, and I per picked those on purpose. So I kind of went through the books and found the ones I liked um, when I purchased them. Now you can see I'm starting to build up my color, but I still want, I want this really layered up. And what I did the, the first time I did this is I just used up my oxides, then I went to the stains and stuff to add that extra on there and I smushed that in as well. I'm gonna do this just one more time with a little more Right persimmon, and I'm gonna switch. So I'm gonna put a little. Uh, this is just now distressing peacock feathers, just to get a little bit more vibrancy out, out of my blues. Then I'll switch to my stains, and um, probably have this about where I want it. Then I start thinking, you know, the other thing I was thinking too, um, like, what am I going to do with, like, are these thank you cards, or these get well cards, or they just blank note cards? Um, I try to think of that when I'm, when I'm making a card, when I start to make a card, um, and then sometimes I'm like, and I'll be honest, that's how this came about. Like, sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. I'm just going to do some mixed media, I'm going to do my distress oxides and I want to do some ink smushing, I've never really done ink smushing, and then I'm just going to decide afterwards. Um, I try to plan, I try to plan a little bit more like sentiment, This is I, I need to make a birthday card and here's the end result. Um, but these, I'm just like, I don't even know what I'm going to put on here for sentiments. Um, I might just leave them blank for blank cards, but um, I just know that I wanted to do the um, ink smushing and um, Decide when I'm done. All right, I'm gonna just take my now my spare one here and smush up the rest of this. I'm just letting that one dry on the side. I'm not drying that one um, because it's just extra that I'm using to get the rest up and maybe make something out of if it, if it looks decent enough. All right, here's my two. Now I'm gonna throw a little, little, little bit of brown into this. Then I'm gonna layer up my. Um, my Distress Spray Stains. So um, this one is the Distress Ink Scorched Timber. Really like this, this color actually. And I just want to get a little bit for my backgrounds on here into this. Oop. Give it a little more water. I'm using the Distress Sprayer um, if, if you're wondering. Um, I worked without the Distress Sprayer for a long time and just used a spray bottle. Um, 
My alcohol is in an old hairspray bottle. The other ones were just an old water bottle um, from my hair days um, as a hairdresser. I'm going to put a little bit more because this one got a little washy on me, so I'm just going to do a little bit with this, this second one here just to give it a little darkness in there. Kind of wanting a little more coffee, coffee look to it. All right, I'm going to leave these as is. Then I'm going, to, I'm going to put some spray stains on there. This is where I'm going to kind of focus on the edges and on my bare spots to get coverage. Um, and then layer this. And I'll probably put a little bit of extra brown over the top um, like I did on the other ones. What I did is I crumpled it. Then I just ran the ink across so it was kind of sitting on the on the hills or on the, uh, the creased or crumpled pieces. All right, now... I am just going to go for a little pink. So now I just sprayed this down and I'm going to go for just a little orange. Add a little bit of water to these. Okay. Now I'm going to focus on my edges where I don't have that much coverage of stuff and get some stuff in there. And as you can see, I get a much vibrant color from these. Not the oxides, right? These aren't, aren't oxides. And then I'll take, so this is pink and orange. I'm going to take my, my I think it's mustard seed. Yeah, mustard seed and shabby uh, shutters. Don't know the names of these quite yet. I haven't used these a ton. Um, the dis some of the distress was like some of the, I bought the distress and some mementos. I think were the very first memento teardrops were the very first, very, very first inks I had, I had gotten. Then I tried these, the oxides, because I'd watched videos on them. I'm like, I don't get it. I can't get them to work. Um, so I put those aside and didn't touch them for the longest time. Um, and then I invested in some Catherine Pooler because they were just kind of like, I hate to say this, but like normal kind of inks, right? Um, and now that I've been doing cards, you know, five years or so, um, I'm like, <laughs> Uh, it is time to venture and, and uh, venture out of my, um, what did I start that hashtag? Hashtag think outside the splatter box. It's time for me to get outside the, my little box and try some strip stuff. Okay, so that is the shabby shutters. This is the mustard seed. Again, these are the distress spray stains. And I think after this layer, I'm going to be about done. And then I'll throw my browns on here. And uh, we'll do some modge. We'll get out Miss Modge and Modge Podge her down. You know, and this is the other thing. So, and I don't know if it's, I just turned 50, so there's my age if anybody's one, if anybody cares. Um, and I have just felt like the last six months or four months, maybe more specifically, of, of my card making, I feel it's just time to. Um, get out of my, my comfort zone just a little bit and start trying stuff. Um, and honestly, I'm just I'm just having fun. Like, then that's when I got into the YouTube thing. Some friends were like, you need to do YouTube and you need to sell these on Etsy and you're doing so, you're so good at it and just, you know. So I was scared to, but I'll, I'll be honest, I'm just having fun. Like, I just, I love to video it. I love doing the video editing even. Um, so I'm just, I'm just having fun and if stuff, I used to get so like mad or like I felt like I was wasting time if a car didn't turn out or if a background t didn't turn out, um, I I'd get kind of upset with myself. But now I'm like, I'll be honest, this is what happens. I got it, I got it. I think I've said this before, but if something's like I'm not sure about it, it ends up in this pile of some of my practice stuff and some of my video stuff because I'm like, I'll make a card out of it later. Um, and I made up, this was like leftover smushing. I already had this thingy down. So I'm like, well, let me smush that because I might think of something for that later. Um, I just save it. I have, a, I have a couple of those baskets. Okay, here we go. Done ink smushing these. I love these. These just turned out, I think, even better than my first set. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, I'm going to dry these just a little bit more. I can feel that they're damp. <clears throat> I'm going to turn these. So Remember too, you're drying the ink, but you're also drying the paper. Um, whether it be, so this craft paper is super thin and super porous. Um, if you're using cardstock, you gotta do the same. Kind of dry that paper too, at the same time. Just not, not just that ink, because you've gotta set it and get that paper dry. 
even though I'll re-wet this once I Mod Podge it, but then I'll just let that sit overnight. And then I'm going to switch over to the other ones that I had pre-made to assemble just to show you kind of end result. All right, pretty dry. Okay, now I'm going to take these and I'm crumpling, but I'm trying to crumple so that I get lots of, st of the the mountain stuff, right? Versus crumpling down. I'm trying to crumple up. If that even is a thing, I don't know. Um, I just need I just need mountains to, to ink onto is all I'm trying to trying to do. Um, versus I feel like if I crumple this way it's all gonna be down versus if I crumple this way it'll it'll be like popped up, right? Um, and I guess I, when I did this the first time, I'm like, it kind of works, it kind of doesn't, but I'm still, getting, I'm still getting crumples that I want. All right, now I'm going to take my Distress Ink Scorch Timber, okay? And I'm just going to drag across so I get those tips of the mountains, basically, okay? No pressure here, I'm just doing a light swipe because I just want that to grab onto that. All right? That's it. That's all I'm going to do to it. At the end, what I did with these is I did some ink blending around the edges, but not not right yet. Now, I like this one, the brightness of this one, so I'm not going to mod podge the top of this one. I'm going to lay this one down. I'm going to mod podge the top of this one, okay? Now, I've got my two bases that I've made. Let me move this stuff aside. Get my little piece of paper for mod podging. Just a, another piece of same same cardstock. This cardstock's super thin, that's why I'm using it. Um, Mod Podge. Um, you can dump it in a bowl. You can dump it in the side. Um, I will say this: be careful. Mod Podge dries relatively quick, so if you're using brushes and things, you got to wipe it off, wipe your surface off right away. Um, but it will. It takes a while for it to set once you do something like this, right? Um, <clears throat> so just be just be mindful of that. Now. I'm in this Mod Podge I'm using is the matte finish, um, and it's just the the regular regular excuse me regular Mod Podge dries clear. Okay, now I'm going to Mod Podge my base. This is the one where I'm going to set it down and not do the top. Okay. I, um, and I bought Mod Podge because I saw some cards made with Mod Podge and tissue paper. I've tried that. Um, I might do a video on that, I think. But I want to do some white ones for wedding cards. And I think that crumpled tissue paper looks so pretty. All right. And again, I'm using a thinner cardstock, so be conscious of that. I should use a, a, lot, a thicker one, but I'm using up scraps. All right, now this is the one I'm just going to set this in, and I'm, I'm crumpling and setting. That's why I did larger than my base, so I had... I had crumple room because I want hills and valleys of this as this dries. Now, I will tell you from experience from doing my other two, get those edges down so they glued down. If not, I added a little glue, you know, my, my regular card glue on the edges this morning when I, when I looked at these after they dried um, overnight. But I'm just now pushing that in so it's mod podged along the edge so I don't have to worry about gluing. And I'll trim that stuff off. Okay? That's it. Gonna let this one dry. I want this, see if I can get that. I want this textured valley kind of, kind of media, right? Now, I could take right now, which I think I might just a little bit, and hit these, val these hills one more time. Now that they're standing up a little bit more. And I can wait till it dries and do that too. Okay, now I'm going to Mod Podge this whole thing. So I'm going to Mod Podge it on the bottom so it sticks. Then I'm going to Mod Podge it on the top so it gets, so I get that saturated and like glued down and glossy. This is going to make it more glossy. The other one, because I'm not doing the front, it's going to stay more um, that oxide that oxide finish because I didn't redo that front side. Okay, now this one, valley it a little bit, but it's, but it's gonna still flatten out when I when I mod podge this. Okay, now I load up pretty good because I need this to spread. And look at that change the color already. Look at that green pop through as these colors mix. 
very mossy, mossy kind of look and neon-ish neon almost, right? Okay. Now I got to pick this up because it sticks quite a bit. Mod Podge is kind of different to work with, but I, it's another media that I, I wanted to do because of the, the tissues. Now look at the difference. Look at how much that changed. These were really similar, but look at how much that changed. So mossy, greeny kind of look, different, you know, water, just different look, right? I'm going to set these aside to dry. We're going to go back now and do my other two pieces with the, um, with the book. And then um, we'll assemble as these dry because I'll have to assemble these off camera um, after they dry. So now I'm just going to clean up this stuff. I got a little bit of Mod Podge down here. Um, right now, because it's still wet, I'm just using my alcohol and that wipes it off pretty good. Clean this off because we're going to ink smush just with spray stain. Okay, now. I'm going to do two. I have extra because I'm going to make some more of these. We're going to do two. Now, I changed... No, I didn't change books, so I wanted to show you. So, again, this is the book. Let me show you um, this other book that was like... Um, the pages were super cool on it. There's uh, these other two. So look at this one. Check this out. Look at that natural aging on that. Um, would that not be cool just to put on as is with that natural aging um, of, the, of the book? So I grabbed this one. Then I grabbed this one because look at the look at the edge of the paper. And then as you open these, it's like it's already frayed on the edges. So I thought those would be cool to have on the you know edge. And it's got some natural natural aging in here. Plus this one had old pictures in it, um, which I thought would be super cool on cards. Some of the, there are some cute little pictures. Um, anyway. Those are the other books. We're gonna just, I'm gonna just open up. I'm not, I'm not concerned about um, what page or anything like that. I, I did look, to be very honest, that's why I, I, I did look at some of the book stuff just because like, like this one um, has some religious stuff on it. So I'll just probably make sure that stuff gets covered or, or whatnot. I just don't want, don't wanna offend anybody um, with with what's on the page and I'm not actually sure what the book is about. I probably should have done that um, so I am just ripping up some pieces No rhyme or reason on this This is also um, You know when I was kind of thinking what I wanted to do um, I just now could I Mod Podge this yes I'm not going to because I want this to dry a little quicker um, to, to stamp. Um, but I just thought this is something that like there's no rhyme or reason and I don't have to think. So if you want something just to like I need to craft, I don't want to think too hard, you know something like this works because you're just ink smushing, you're not even thinking too hard about it. Um, here my pattern is going to be whatever my pattern is going to be. Um, as I as I lay these down, I'm not even thinking about. I, all I'm thinking about is covering this whole piece. That's all I'm thinking about. And trying, you know, like, do I want a lot of that space? Do I want more writing? Um, let's turn that like this. So I got some more. Right, oops, <laughs> the glued side down, Sean. So I got some more writing on that one. Now I'm going to take. Um, I just want. I want like a drip going down the middle. Yeah. And I'll be honest, like when I was practicing this last night, just to see if it would work and if, I, if I'm figuring this out, just watching other people's stuff too, um, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of like, this is kind of fun. Like, it's so, it's so different for me. Um, that I'm just, it's just kind of cool. Again, just randomly laying this down. This was one page total. It was one page. And you'll have to get those edges down probably a little bit um, just for stamping. I had to glue a few of my edges down from yesterday before I like showed because I saw that some of them were like 
as I ink blended the edges of these even this morning, um, they were popping up because they weren't glued down. Like here, I'll get, I'll get my corners and stuff good so that when I do ink blend around, it's not lifting up on me again. Could I take and brush glue on? Um, like brush it like my Mod Podge? Yeah, it sure could. Just, you know, you gotta be con Remember, this stuff dries a little quicker, right? Um, all right, now let's just clean my surface. Should have probably put my page down, but that's all right. I would say um, this was, this is also, um, I was looking for something more mixed media beginner because I hadn't done any big, big mixed media stuff. And I was like, I gotta do this kind of beginner concept um, to make it easy for me to understand and figure this out. Okay, now, here's what we're gonna do. I'm not going to trim these yet. Um, because I might re-rip re around the edges and keep one ripped and keep one um, and, and cut one. Now I'm going to spray stain these. So if you look, definitely more vibrant. You can see the vibrancy in this one, but um, it, it got a little dark around the edges. And, and then again, when I stamped it, it wasn't probably the best dry. But I can feel, it's really humid here right now, and I can actually feel in the paper, it's a little hum humid feeling. I haven't wet this at all yet besides the glue, but you can kind of feel it. Um, so, just something to, to remember when you're, when you're doing this. All right, I'm gonna lay my couple colors down. Give myself a little water, and then I, I'm doing the same thing. I'm kind of, whoops, I mixed that a little bit, got a little muddy. Let's just redo that one. All right, now, same concept. I'm just smushing and drying. Smushing and drying. Smushing and drying. Look at that, how brittle that paper is. It just, it literally just broke right off. Okay, I'm gonna dry in between. Let's just pick up that on my scratch. My scratch is not so bad, it's more pastel -y. I actually might have a third card out of, the, out of that just with that scrap. I should be making a third of these just to, to match it. All right, I'm gonna a little alcohol this just to get some of that up. So feel free if you want to leave a comment. Um, what do you think of this? Um, am I doing okay for the first time on this? Um, anybody huge mixed media person, people out there, um, got any pointers for me? Um, recommendations for me? Um, I, again, I love the look of this stuff. Um, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it, to be very honest. Um, all right, so. Uh, my orange is ripe persimmon and then the, again mustard seed. I'm going to give it just a little water to spread that out and smush and dry. Smush and dry. I did realize too that like if I'm going to stamp on these, um, if, I feel like it's, it's better to, to keep them a little bit more vibrant on the top so that stamp shows. I feel like you could smush as much you, as you want. I could leave this now and leave some more like page space and, and that lettering, sh the, the script showing through a little bit better. Um, but at the same time, I could keep smush. I could add some browns to this if I wanted to. I'm not gonna do that till the end, I think, around the edges, but. I'm digging this little, this new little tool. I honestly just unpacked this last night and um, yesterday when I was practicing the, um, the other cards here. Um, to try to try this technique. So this, uh, I know this would be great for some of the watercoloring and practicing with, which I should probably do another second video, of a second attempt try after after, after my first one. Um, I have done a couple cards with uh, Tim Holtz water pencils, watercolor pencils, which I absolutely, absolutely love. Um, like really like those. I've done some flower, colored flowers and stuff for some cards I've sent out for birthdays. Um, all right, what what do I want? I think I'm gonna go a little more green. Let me wipe this. A 
a little more green, and I might actually call it call it um, call it a uh, call it a game. Call it quits after this layer. A little more. There we go. I feel like this is one of those techniques that um, there's no there's no set way there's no set way or set time to stop or start. Um, it's like you kind of go as a, this is this seems a lot of personal preference. Like you know how like a layered stamp you like layer then you layer the next layer then you layer the next layer and then you're done right. This it's like you can layer this as much as you want until you're ready to stop um, until you get the look that you want. I might leave this as is because I want this a little lighter so my stamps show through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really, really make sure I get these dry this time before I stamp um, to see if I don't get some, some bleeding and uh, what's that called? Blushing or bleeding when it spreads out for my stamp. All right. Cool little tool. This is the Ranger Heat It Craft, the Heat It Heat Tool. It's definitely not a blow dryer. I will say that. I'm an ex hairdresser of, oh gosh, 20 years. It's not a blow dryer. It looks like a little mini blow dryer. Blows like a blow dryer, but it blows more, a little bit more direct and and hot, on very low. There's no there's no settings of how fast this comes out. It's one setting, and it just comes out low and hot. I'm just getting a little closer to the paper, trying not to burn it too, but trying to make sure this is good and dry this time. And you can see my paper starting to to roll, which means you're getting the paper dry too. Okay, what I'm going to do, just while this is, uh, while I'm cleaning up, I'm going to lay my book on there just to try to... Um, Flatten that a little bit as it cools. And we'll set up my stamp. So let me just move my stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to do one of these and I'll do the other card off camera because um, then we can assemble. But here's, I just want to show you what, how I, how I set this up and what I did. So um, I'm just going to use, um, I think I'm going to use this one. And I like I like the one with the leaves on it. So I'm using that and the leaves. So we're going to do that. Then I'm going to just throw this one and this one around the bottom. Because I like a little, little like greenery um, stuff coming like it's coming up in a little trio. Okay. Then I, I have the. Um, Simon says, I think this is the Wallflower um, Grip Mat that I got from Simon Says Stamp. Now I'm just kind of making sure this is as straight up and down as possible. Sticking that down. And I'm just going to start with, with this. Coming like so. Pick that up. Now what I did with these is I used like scorched timber. I'm going to switch this time to see if it makes a difference. I'm going to use the archival ink jet black um, because the other one was water reactive and it probably that's why it blushed or, or smushed on me. So I'm going to switch. This seems pretty dry but I'm just switching just to try it. Okay. Um, set that and I'm going to do this a couple times so that I could a good bright image. I don't want my image, I don't want to lose my image too, too much into my background. <clears throat> That's three. I'm going to do one more. So this is four times I'm stamping. Okay. Take that off. Now I'm going to throw this one on. Like so. And we're going to do the same thing. I'll probably do this four times. This set, this is I think only the second set that I have 
that are these um, red rubber foam back stamps. Um, I'm not pushing a lot because it's not, I have the grip mat in there, so this doesn't go down all the way, so I'm just giving it some pressure with my fingers. I'm not really working down on it, right? Okay. Oh, this, okay, this is working better than my other one. Now, it made sense to me as I was talking this out. It probably did this last night to me because damp and it's water reactive. Duh, duh, Sean. Um, okay, now I'm going to throw this one and this one in here at the same time. Like so. I'm going to get a twofer on this one. This... Okay, this is what I was going for last night. Trying to, this con this look and concept. Um, but again, I'm trying something different. I wasn't, I was going for the effect. I thought it'd be cool if it was in a dark brown. Um, I know I get this in dark brown, I don't have it, but like, like, I, I should have, I should have thought of that. That this was the water reactive ones that I was using. But, this, I like this is what I was this is what I was going for um, I just washed this grit mat for the first time holy man does that work like I love this when I first bought it got a little dusty and I know you're, you can I just washed it and dried it before I started the video um, and probably one of my more favorite purchases ever is this grit mat honestly um, I, I'm gonna throw this other one up here really quick um, we're just going to go here. Can I go around that? Can I get a threefer? We're going to go for a threefer on this one. And then I'll throw the the branch in there. Um, use the archival again. Oops, i got to pick that up. Pick that up. These would be just great little, just note cards for somebody to use for whatever they, you know, what last minute card for anything, um, without a sentiment on it. These are great to have on hand kind of cards. I, I feel like. So again, my concept was I've seen other people do kind of versions of these, um, and I'm like I gotta try that because I like the simplicity of them. I liked, I, want, I needed to practice with the ink smushing. Perfect, perfect. Let's throw a branch on there. I like my leafy. I like my leafy branch. So throw that in there. Yeah, so I just was like, I, I kind of tried that. I had bought this set quite a while back thinking, I, 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 you know, I liked it. I'd seen other people use it. So I'm like, uh, I was actually going to use these, just the one flower for like simple sympathy cards. Um, and then I thought this works, this, these would be great for these little mixed media things I had seen and wanted to try. God darn it, I'm loving this one. I'm loving this one. Alright, I'm being careful because the page is kind of fragile. Um, there you have it. That's just, um, I'm going to move this stuff out of my way. We'll clean that here as the afterthought as we're done. Okay, here's my two card fronts. Here's my two card bases that we just made. Now I could layer this on just like that and keep them torn, or I could cut them out, right? I feel like some of these are a little big. That's just because if I was to tear these, I'd probably just break these down just a tiny bit more, like so. Same with this one. I might take this one down. And I might break this straight edge up a little bit. Like so. I think I'm going to leave those torn. I might put a little uh, burnt on the edges, which I can do now. These are relatively dry. So I'm going to take my scorched timber and just a scratch piece of paper. We grab a scratch here. Okay, old scratched one. And this is what I did on the other one, just to give this aged look around the edges.
as dark as you want or as, as light as you want. I was tempted to burn these edges, but I thought these books are so brittle. I'd pro it'd probably just the whole page would probably go up in flames in my hand, and because that's just how I roll, and and um, I'm so accent prone. But I thought it'd be cool to have burnt edges rather than a like blend with an ink with like this. But I was like, no, nah, uh, no. I'm just gonna ink blend. We're just gonna play it safe, Sean. Yeah, I like that. So accent prone that that kind of that's totally what would happen to me. Now we will go on to the ones that I did yesterday and assembled just to kind of see a fully assembled one. Um, I'll lay these back down really quick. Okay, so there's that. So this. And this, and man, oh man, has that got color? Like, like, wow. Um, I can't wait to trim and throw this on. I wouldn't even need to trim this necessarily if I had a big five by seven or something. I could just leave that on there, um, but I'm gonna put these on A2. But holy buckets, I am digging these big time. Um, like, seriously, these are so cool. I can't even, I'm so, like, these are just so cool. Okay, let's, I'm, I'm, I don't want to waste time. Let's just throw these up really quick. So these are the ones I did yesterday. This is the Mod Podge on both sides, Mod Podge on the one side. I like this one and this one better than this one. This one got so, uh, I might have to, I might cut this up into something else. Um, so I have one, one cut and one not cut um, around the edges. And so I feel like the green goes the with the green here, and this, I think, goes here, okay? Um, let me grab um, a card base here. I'm gonna do this one. All right, so now my idea behind this was this was just gonna go straight onto the card without my mat, okay? So let's just glue this down. Get those corners so that lays down because this is kind of curled up from drying with the Mod Podge. And let's just line this up like so. Put my big weight on it. I have a video on what these are. Go check it out. It's on my Monday Moments. Um, it's leftover stone from when we had our pool built this summer, and they are my weights for my cards. I have this size, and I have this size. Um, and yes, I went dumpster diving, dumpster diving to get them. Um, dumpster diving, don't care. I like, I, they work really well. Um, let me grab another card base, because I'm gonna glue that other one down. Just because then I'm done, right? I just let's just glue these down. Throw my little branding on the back. I always do my little branding. Where you can find me, check me out, go buy some cards on Etsy. I'm gonna leave that just dry a little bit more and glue this one down. So same size. I did a top fold and a side fold here just so we can try both. Get that lined up really nice. Okay. Weight those edges down. That that stuck really nice. That weight, I'm telling you. Get yourself a rock to hold your stuff down, seriously. Um, all right. I'm going to pop this up. This is... I will be honest, this paper, mm, kind of fragile on the on the um, the book. So this might be one of those, uh, be very fragile when you mail it. I might have to put like a little, another piece of paper to cover it when I put it in the envelope. Um, C 
Could you put something on the inside to stamp to, to give a little something on the inside? You sure could. Um, even on the on the envelope, you sure could. I was tempted to put this on craft paper, like a craft craft card. Um, but then I was like, I want the colors. I just was like, I wonder if the colors will pop better on on white. But I think these would look great on on craft. All right. This is my top fold card. Center, you know, could a, kitty wampus. I'm gonna go just kind of right down the center. Let that dry. Switch to this is my my side fold. So could I go like this and make it a t you know top? Yes. Could I go like this? Yes. All right. Let's just throw some dimensionals on this one. Okay. Second time doing this. It, with my um, trying this technique in this style of card, um, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with the way that second set turned out actually almost better than the first set. And I know it's one of those, yeah, of course, practice. Practice makes perfect. And you get better the more you try and the more you just, like, just do. Um, so, yeah, guess the moral of this video just try something different. Um, I'm just trying to do some different stuff. 50s pushing me outside that box just a little bit, I guess. Um, to and to just just have fun. I'm just having fun. I just don't, you know. I just want to try something different and see if I can do it. Okay, up camera. Uh, let me get in the circle there. Up camera. Wow. Like there's a ton of color on these. Like a ton of color on those. Those just look amazing. Um, I'm so happy with these. Um, that, those are my cards. Again, let me show you just really quick. So these I made yesterday. We just assembled them for you. These I just made now. So that you can see this is still. These are still wet. Um, so these are the the two techniques of mod podging, and then my um, bright kind of uh, floral stamp on top. So there you have it. Let's come back up here. Wow. Okay. Here you go. Face. Face forward, check these out. I always figure, I can't ever figure out this way, this way, this way. Okay, look at these. I'm so happy with these. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sticking it out till the end if you're still watching. If you are new here, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to get notified next time my next video goes up. If you are not new here and you keep returning to check my stuff out, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the bell button and get notified when my next video comes up. I send a Monday Moments video where I share tips, tricks, and helpful hints every Monday. Every other Saturday I do a scrappy shorts where I use up my scraps um, with stuff like this. This stuff could totally be a scrappy card. Um, so I use up my scraps on my scrappy shorts. So there you have it. Thank you, thank you so much. If I've encouraged you to do anything, I hopefully it is a hashtag think outside the splatterbox. And until next time, I will see you then.